Okay, I think we're ready to reconvene. Um, before we do uh, document 4.1.1, which is the agenda item, uh, I would like to um, return to a point of order uh, relating to document two. Uh, unfortunately, and I apologize for this, I had to step out of the room yesterday um, and uh, I wasn't here when uh, there was a call for adoption of the um, of that document, it's uh, it's important that the president be president when be present when any document is is adopted. And so, uh, what I would just like to do is uh, refer to the to the members and just want to ensure myself <coughs> that all members are in agreement that document two was in a condition uh, that we can adopt it. Um, are there any objections to it being adopted? It's the document that's on the screen now, document two. Uh, it's the report of the Hydrology and Water Resources Program. No? Yeah, it's just a one-page document. There's no resolutions or recommendations associated with it. Okay, if there, are, if there are no comments, I am assuming then that everyone is contented that this is a document ready for adoption. So adopted. Okay, now we can move on to uh, document 4.1.1, which um, is quality management framework hydrology. In this particular uh, document, we have uh, a couple of decisions to deal with. We have a draft resolution. Um, for the further implementation of QMF hydrology and CHY strategy for regulatory material. And then we have a second resolution that deals with the project for the assessment of the performance of flow measurement instruments and techniques, or what we refer to as Project X. Um, so with that, uh, as background, I'm going to turn it over now to the Secretariat uh, for an introduction of this material. Um, thank you, Mr. President. So the first uh, topic of the item is the QMF, the Quality Management Framework, uh, which provides advice, guidance, and tools for the national hydro services to attain quality, efficiency, and effectiveness in their functioning. Uh, it must be noted that the Congress 17 uh, last year requested the presence of the technical commissions to continue and developing the quality management in a coordinated way under the overarching uh, WMO QMF. And this topic was addressed in the pre-session uh, discussion and uh, with five questions uh, for the, the, the public and we uh, received six answers so, so far. And the first question was on training. Uh, do you think it would be worthwhile to provide training on QMS uh, development during the next intercession period to more effectively engage the national hydro services in their priority? And all people answer by a yes. Uh, with some comments uh, uh, asking for more emphasis on the demonstration of the benefits of implementing a, a quality management system uh, by existing examples. So, uh, yes. Uh, the second question was to think if the, 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 the community think that identifying uh, one national service as a champion of the quality management system for each regional association may help to build momentum by providing local advice and assistance of development of QMS, so defining a champion. Um, there are more or less uh, a, a yes, um, uh, one answer missing. Uh, it's not as simple as that, obviously, but it's a good idea that we should, uh, we should go on in that direction. And um, it could be nice that the regional association themselves would uh, make suggestions in that domain. And anyway, we, we need, in addition to a champion, there is a need for an expert on QMS. And it would be difficult to have just one champion because uh, the, the region may be very heterogeneous. So it's not one than yes, but with clarifications to be done. And the third question was, 
do you think that the guidance material, including the QMS checklist and case studies, should be available under the other common UN languages, such as French, Spanish, Russian, etc.? So, translation. So, answer yes, 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 six times yes. But uh, with the wish to, to, to keep it simple and short in order not to, to scare potential users. And it's all said that it's crucial for that kind of material to use all the UN languages. And there um, should also be consideration on metadata, data formats, and transmission modes, not, not only just the, the QMS. So important to have translations. And the uh, fourth question was, do you think that it would be beneficial for all national hydro services without an existing QMS to participate in internal reviews conducted by other NHS having a, a QMS? Um, answer are whether yes and one, one uh, no, because it will be interesting but difficult to, to organize and uh, we, we might need a case study first. So it, it won't, the, the answer is important but not easy just to jump in a, a, a QMS um, review uh, without any background, but good idea. And uh, um, the last question was actually uh, other suggestions and uh, other actions required. So language issue, issue was uh, um, uh, repeated as an important point. Uh, suggestion making a poll um, on all the hydro services are operating under a QMS on their quality objectives, customers, products, and so on. And uh, to, to, to share guidance and challenges uh, between the hydro services that are facing ongoing issues and, for instance, the transition from one ISO to, to the other ISO. And that's the summary of this uh, point. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. The way we're going to go through this document is we'll take the, the three primary ses sections, um, and then at the end of each section, we'll open the floor for discussion. I just think it'll be easier for everyone to follow if we do it that way. So the floor is now open for discussion for this first section of 4.1.1. Okay, my, my I didn't prepare any presentation Before we go there, my mistake. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, AWG member who was responsible for, uh, for this, uh, this work to also provide a little bit of additional insight to everyone so that they have a, a little bit better perspective on this, uh, on this document. So Jean-Francois. Is that possible to uh, to go to the uh, QMS uh, website so everybody can uh, see the, some details of uh, what was done recently on that front? <coughs> no problem. Right. Right. So, so what I what I want to show you there is that <clears throat> there's already a uh, an excellent uh, quality management framework uh, web page, dedicated web page, with uh, a lot of uh, material, guidance material, explanation of uh, the reason why uh, the implementation of QMS is a good idea for uh, NHSs. What was done recently? What was added to it is the um, portion. Uh, that we can, oh, I, I don't see it very well from here. You, you want to scroll down? You have to tell your... Yeah, there is a checklist. There is a checklist somewhere that I'd like to... Uh, yeah, right there. The checklist. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 
Okay. So what you see there is the uh, is a resume of the latest uh, addition to the QMS uh, sub portfolio of the QMFH, so to speak. Um, what uh, what it provides is further guidance. Uh, for NHS that uh, wish to implement a uh, quality management system in their operations. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a, uh, it, 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 it takes the form of a step-by-step -step, uh, guidance, but also it, it's based on uh, a survey that, uh, first there was a, a survey that was done a year ago uh, on uh, all the uh, uh, NHSs to see uh, what is the, t the status of the implementation of quality management system. So uh, there were uh, uh, 44 responses out of the uh, 124 uh, uh, questionnaires that were sent. And uh, from that, uh, we, uh, the, we, um, we've been able to identify uh, those uh, few, uh, well, the distribution of the NHS and I, I don't have the uh, the table uh, in, uh, right uh, ready for uh, to to be uh, demonstrated here, but we've been able to identify that uh, we um, the ISO is implemented in a very few, a few NHSs, and uh, uh, I, I don't I don't have the uh, do you have the table uh, nearby? It would be uh, useful to have the. Can I? Well, I point them the it'll, uh, wait a second. Just, just let me, just, just one announcement. Tomorrow when we are in the new room, we are in the back room, it will be easier to do. We have a, this is a temporary solution, so please, and, and to the speaker, when you want, you, you need to give instru clear instruction. Okay. If you want to scroll, go to item, whatever, okay? Okay. Because they have to run it from there. Okay, points okay. that you can use directly. So let's go to that presentation right here. Let's show it. No. Oops, sorry. Go back once. No, you're not doing it. You just have La Prima, there. Okay. If you scroll down on that presentation, I expect we'll see the, uh, the table. If it's not there, it will be in the report. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh. There we see the uh, distribution of, uh, of the uh, questionnaire, the responses, uh, the number of, uh, of uh, uh, NHS that have implemented a, a QMS system, and those that are uh, ISO uh, certified. So eight ISO certified, 20. Uh, internal QMS uh, put in place, and out of the uh, 44, I think, or I don't see very well, 44, uh, 16 uh, don't have a formal QMS. So that was valuable information to provide us, like, like with a general uh, overview of the status of implementation of uh, quality management systems. So. What was also developed is for, for uh, we asked four different uh, NHS to, that have implemented the uh, quality management system to uh, develop their, uh, to, to, tell, to tell the community their story. What, was the, what were the challenges, what were the uh, benefits of implementing QMS? And if you go back to, yeah, to, if you scroll down a little bit, yeah, right there. So we have four case st studies that uh, that you can uh, you can consult. You can see uh, what uh, the uh, what were uh, the experience that those NHS uh, went through implementing a QMS. Some were uh, IS, some are ISO certified, some are not. So. Using that information, the result from the survey, the result from the case studies, and the, the, the also looking at the, uh, the guidance material that's already uh, in the, uh, the QMFH uh, 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 website, what was developed is uh, a further guidance. It's a checklist to, to help uh, NHS that uh, do not have uh, 
a quality management system to help them move along uh, and uh, using this, uh, this guidance that is like uh, um, really uh, a detailed step-by-step uh, -step, uh, uh, guidance on how to implement QMS. So we can move uh, for it to, yeah, step, so step one is to, to develop the good understanding and that's where the case studies uh, come to play. Step two, if you scroll down, uh, is uh, to, uh, to get uh, top management involved. We, in Canada, we've implemented the quality management system and I can, I can tell the importance of having uh, top management uh, really engage uh, into the, uh, to, in, toward this, uh, this goal. It's essential. So then step three, uh, to, uh, you have to establish the uh, quality policy and quality objective and so on. So those are step by step uh, guidance to, to, to further help those uh, NHS that need to, that want to implement the QMS. So if we go back to the resolution, Which resolution? Uh, the proposed resolution, I think. Uh, the the, mean? <laughs> you have to be a little more specific. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Okay. You want to go to the resolution? Yeah. What is what is exactly proposed uh, for adoption? Further down. This is the rest. Yeah, further down, further down. The sides, on the middle, the sides. Yeah. I'll top the third. There. No? Is that, is that what you want? Yeah, but I have difficulties to read from here. So, the. Uh, the resolution uh, really asks to uh, decide on the. Uh, to continue the development of QMA, QMFH in complementarity with the work of other uh, WMO technical commissions and consistently with overarching WMO QMF. So no, but I, I, it's, it's what you want to see, the, the, the request, the secretary of general, the request of the secretary general, already training, this is. Yeah, so well, further down again. Re, re, Let's show a request a moment. Can I? Absolutely, just, absolutely. I mean, tell you. after the, what Jean-Francois is showing, in the resolution there is a decide to continue and then there is a request to the Secretary General and there is the list and that's what he wants to show. The list now? Yeah. Okay, there. You can read this here. Oh, yeah. Okay. That would be better. This is the request. So the request is to, uh, for the Secretary General to continue supporting the President of the Commission and the Advisory Working Group in providing training on QMS development during the next intersessional period to more effectively engage the NHS in this, in this priority, giving priority to the translation of the guidance material on the QMS, including the QMS checklist and case studies that I briefly uh, showed where they are on the uh, QMF uh, webpage in other UN official languages within the limit of available resource, <laughs> maintaining and further developing the QMFH dedicated website, which uh, we saw uh, minutes ago, finalizing the preparation and publish the manuals on water resource assessment and flood risk mapping, initiating the preparation, what exactly? Uh, well, that's the commission. You're going a little ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can, do you want me to explain? What yes, yes, okay. please. No, basically, the, because this part was by the Secretariat, uh, on the basis of the responses of the, that you just explained, of the presentation discussion, we translated in, those, in suggested items, but this is open to discussion when you go there. If this, we, we, we understood the training, as, as, as Dominique explained, was um, up, uh, Everybody liked the idea, everybody responded. So we, we put that's the, the request number one. 
the translation was given, uh, everybody was in favor, so we put, but of course, if resources are available. Maintain. Now, as regards the publication of manuals, it's up to the commission to decide which manuals should go then. But, okay, so that's why it's dot, dot, dot. But, as I said, you are going a little ahead, but basically what you are saying is that on the basis of the presentation discussion, <coughs> the resolution is trying to, this part of the resolution is trying to interpret the feeling of those that responded, but it's up to the session to say what they want. So this is not, uh, this is proposal, not, okay. okay? The rest refers to other issues, I think. Yeah, okay. okay. So <clears throat> I think at this point, the, uh, the, the idea is to open the floor and hear what you have to say about this further guidance on the uh, implementation of uh, QMS, quality management system, in the uh, uh, National Hydrological Services. Okay. So now the floor is open. Uganda, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this uh, resolution is quiet about the, the, what happened to the previous manuals which were issued by WMO in this particular area. Uh, I don't see it recognized anywhere. Uh, and two, my uh, issue which I raised yesterday where does the regulation of the of the vendors equipment vendors lie is is it within this domain or we shall discuss it separately later thank you yeah. we uh, will uh, address that uh, the second part of uh, of uh, those resolution in their under project x part of the resolution the proposed resolution On the first question, the, the resolution speaks that the last commission requested two manuals to be prepared, the one on water resources assessment and the one on flood risk mapping. Work has been undertaken. It will be discussed under the particular issue, but it's not been finished. So that's why it is a request to finalize and publish the, of those two. Now, if, and, and, and then item five of the request is if, if on the basis of the discussion of the commission, there is the need of a new manual, for instance, on sediment transport. I'm just, I'm not putting the words in your mouth, I'm just saying possible manual, then it should be recorded here. Now, if you refer to the one already existing, like stream gauging, flood forecasting, low flow, the, I don't know if you have any proposal, but we, it's true that this resolution is silent because w those that have already been finalized is a subject of, of training, of capacity building. So. The, it is under capacity building, but there is, is, is not proposed now to, to review them to, or, to, or to issue a new uh, edition, unless it is proposed to do so by the Commission. Other comments or questions? Okay, and what we're going to do is um, we'll wait until we go through the discussion of all components of the document before we do the resolutions. Um, so if there are no other comments on QMFH section, then let's go ahead and move on to uh, the regulatory material. So, Dominique, I'll turn the floor back to you. Okay, thank you. So regulatory material provides standards and recommendations on what national hydro services have to do to ensure the quality of the data and products. And there are two types of, of um, material standards uh, which are mandatory using the word shall 
and the second type being recommendations that are more incentive using what are should. Uh, it must be noted that the commission uh, uses more should than shall, so more recommendations than standards. Um, so regulatory material are whether recommendations and prescriptions and promoting through a culture of voluntarism. The Executive Council uh, this year has adopted a roadmap to an enhanced framework for WMO technical regulations and technical commissions such as the Commission of Hydrology are asked to prioritize the review and update of their relevant part of the technical regulations uh, by the time of the next Congress in uh, 2019. And there is a document on the CHY strategy for regulatory material uh, that has been exposed in the pre-session discussion, uh, which explains the different alternative options available to the Commission. And these options are first business as usual, so no change is what the Commission is doing with the regulatory material. Option two being to implement enhancement to the Commission regulatory material as per WMO technical regulations framework, but while keeping some specific aspects of hydrology. And the option three being a fully realign, uh, realignment of the Commission of hydrology material to be similar to the meteorological documentations. And Based on this, and there is also a pre-session discussion with four questions, and we received four answers. And the first question was, do you think that the pers perspective language and culture of compliance promoted by WMO should be applied more extensively to the Commission of Hydrology Regulatory Material? Um, the answer were um, two times yes, one times rather no, telling that it could be nice to go in these directions, but maybe not systematically. And um, try to align where possible, but keeping the, the, what's specific to the hydrology. And the second question was, do you think that the Commission should embark in an overall review of the content and hierarchy of its regulatory material? Answer two times yes, two times no. Uh, no, because it's not so easy. It will be difficult to change, and we have to take specifications into consideration. And the third question was, do you think that the Commission hierarchy of regulatory material documents should better align with WMO technical regulation, having the, the hierarchy of technical regulations, then manuals and guides? And the answer was two times yes, two times no, uh, with the same consultation telling that it's not so easy, it will be difficult to change, and we have to take the specifications of hydrology into consideration. And the fourth question was, would you support the establishment of a task team to review and assess the Commission regulatory material? Uh, and to recommend the Commission uh, a detailed plan for updating the material and the overview, the implementation, and prepare through uh, text of technical regulation, volume three, to be submitted to the um, Executive Council in 18. And then there were the unanimously yes, uh, four time yes, it's important to do that. And um, but telling that it would be unlikely to have a fully raised regulation of the regulation volume three uh, by uh, 18, 2018. So that's the rapid summary of uh, that point. Thank you. Thank you, Dominique. Um, JF, you'd like to add something? Uh, yes, uh, rapidly. Again, if you uh, could uh, move uh, down. Scroll down, please. <clears throat> oh no, scroll up, scroll up. Scroll up again. Again, again, again. Yeah, okay, stop there. Uh, a, a little bit more, scroll up. The, again, again, again. Down, further down. A little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, stop there. So 
This is the uh, <clears throat> this is the hierarchy of CHY regulatory material. What you see there, we have the, our technical regulations, which is the uh, top level uh, document. Then we have the um, guide to hydrological practices, the uh, the manuals on hydrology and water resources, guidance material, and further technical document. The the ones uh, that are most likely to change or to adapt to new technologies are those uh, toward the uh, like the technical document, the guidance material. Even some manuals are uh, depend on some methods that change uh, uh, more often than what you will find in the top level technical regulation. If you scroll down a little bit up to the down to that uh, triangle, yeah, this one. This is typically the WMO style of regulatory material, where you have on top the technical regulation. The annexes to the technical re regulation are the manuals. It's not the case with CHY uh, hierarchy. And then you have a set of, of guides. The, the two tier, the two top level are uh, really um, that's where you will find the uh, the shawls, the prescriptive language, uh, the uh, uh, that uh, and the culture of compliance that goes with it. You shall do that, and you need to tell us why you don't want to do that. So, so there is a monitoring of the compliance to those. Uh, so that's the typical WMO style. So. Basically, what is being asked in the uh, in the pre-session uh, document, and what is uh, is uh, we uh, we are faced with, uh, is that uh, there is a uh, a clear impetus from uh, WMO to ensure consistency and alignment of all its uh, regulatory material uh, in its style as well as uh, in its uh, the, the, the monitoring of of, the, of compliance. So, what was being asked in the pre-discussion uh, material was really how we want CHY to position itself. Do we want to fully embark on a, uh, a, um, uh, a complete revision of, a, of a, our regulatory material at all levels? To the other end of the spectrum, do we say, no, we are fine with what we have now, so status quo? Or do we want to uh, to go over a middle ground and look at uh, the various level of our uh, technical regulation, see where we can uh, move toward this uh, this more prescriptive language where, where it makes sense? Uh, if we need, do we need to uh, ensure the compliance uh, to what degree? And do we need to change also uh, our uh, hierarchy of documents to align more uh, with uh, WMO style uh, there and? On top of that, there are also other area uh, that on which uh, we can uh, can view, be viewed as an opportunity to to improve, um, like uh, to add the um, document version control. We don't have that everywhere. Uh, removal of obsolete material, uh, and in some document, namely the uh, technical regulation, the pagination, the, uh, the, the page numbering uh, is uh, is not as clear as it could be. So. There is room for improvement, we, and the spectrum is very wide. So I think it's time to open the floor for, for discussions on where the uh, members see the commission would like to go uh, with respect to regulatory material. Floor is open. If I can just add a little perspective here that might help. Um, <coughs> We are an outlier in the organization. Uh, the way we do things is different than every other commission in this regard. So it, uh, it would be helpful for us uh, so that we have a common basis of understanding to be more aligned with the structure that's used by all other technical commissions. Um, but that said, I recognize based on what JF said, that uh, we're talking about uh, if we wanted to go a, a complete uh, revision and realignment with the way the rest of the House does uh, over the next four years, that would be an, an extraordinarily major undertaking. Um, so just you know, evaluate that as, as you're thinking about it. Uh, Czech Republic? Thank you, Chair. Now, this is the difficult issue. Uh, I would just 
maybe reiterate my comments uh, uh, from the pre-session discussion that, well, we totally agree that we should uh, include more shells in, uh, in, in our regulatory materials. Uh, but uh, it's not that easy as uh, in meteorology where uh, well, you can prescribe many things much more easily than in hydrology where you have to definitely measure uh, at, the, at the location where you can because you, you cannot uh, 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 prepare a perfect uh, site for the measurement everywhere. So you have to uh, be, let's say, a little bit less prescriptive in, in many aspects uh, when it goes to measurement, uh, observation, and, and as well as data processing. On the other hand, uh, we have to also consider that the development within the WMO uh, led in recent years uh, to, uh, well, broadening the scope of some manuals uh, and, and, and cross-cutting issues, namely VIS and VIGOS, that uh, are, uh, well, activities uh, now spreading over all technical commission, including hydrology what wasn't case uh, in previous uh, uh, years. So now we are in the situation that we have uh, manuals uh, developed by CHY that are manuals as we understood it so far, but also hydrological uh, issues appears in the manuals that are meteorological in origin and they are, uh, are really a regulatory materials uh, are at, at the different levels. So. It's very difficult to, 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 to have a clear opinion on that, but uh, we would really uh, prefer to uh, go something like a middle way, to, to, to try to align as much as possible within the given time frame of uh, uh, the next intercessional periods uh, with the, uh, the WMO culture of, uh, or, or structure of regulatory materials. Yet I cannot imagine to renaming uh, a renaming of guide to hydrological practices because that would completely, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 confuse um, most of the hydrological community. Uh, and I'm afraid of that, that. That this is something that we we simply cannot do. Uh, but uh, well, so we vote something for for the uh, the option that is not a fully compliance, but by doing as much as we can. Uh, trying to to include something to so, some some annexes to technical regulation, voluntary hydrology, uh, to get a little bit more aligned with with, with what is uh, common for other commissions and other activities within WMO. Thank you. Uh, let me add a little bit more perspective here, uh, without confusing the situation too much. If you if I refer you to the annex to to the draft uh, resolution. Um, 4.1 paren 1 slash no I'm sorry we don't even have to go there uh, draft resolution 4.1 slash 1 stroke 1 um, there are under the item decides um, under decides two that says the commission shall express its opinion on the following questions. Uh, I would suggest that in this discussion that we're having now, you focus on those, uh, those questions that are there, use those as a guide in your interventions. I think that'll help clarify things because where we'll resolve all these things will be in the resolution itself, even though we're not discussing it right now, be mindful that that's where we'll have our impact here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's these questions are whether to adopt in CHY's regulatory material a more prescriptive language when suitable to promote a culture of compliance. Uh, the second question is the extent of the review and update exercise, that is, should it address only technical regulations or also the guide to hydrological practices as well as the manuals on hydrology and water resources, the guidance material and the technical documents. Um, then whether to align CHY's hierarchy and naming of regulatory materials with WMO's general practice and terminology. And in that case, what we're talking about is realigning the hierarchy 
uh, the little cube where um, at the very top are the tech regs, and then we go to the guide and then to the, to the manuals. Everybody else goes from general regs to the manuals, uh, to, the, to the guidelines. And then finally, whether to establish a task team of experts operating under the AWG to review and assess CHY regulatory material, establish a detailed plan for updating it and overview its implementation and prepare a revised text of Tech Regs Volume 3 to be submitted to EC in 2018. So that's a year and a half from now. Um, so these are, the, these are the things that I think will help guide us in the way we uh, complete this uh, resolution. Uh, Czech Republic wants the floor again. Thank you, Chair. So let me react to your comment uh, and, and just reply to the questions. Concerning uh, are the whether uh, to adopt a CHY regulatory material a more prospective language? Yes, definitely. Bad weather cautions. Uh, the extent uh, uh, of the review should definitely include technical <coughs> regulation, and we would see also the value of having some uh, review uh, on selected topics of guide and maybe elect that it, uh, 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 just, just move it as, a, as an annex to technical regulation as is common for the other commissions and regulatory materials. Uh, when it goes to three, whether to align CHY hierarchy and naming, we have, I already expressed my questions about, about the renaming, we then have to invade something like having CHY manuals or some adjective manuals to, to be clear on that, but uh, I'm, I'm really not sure uh, of a response to that uh, question. And when it goes to the establishment of task team of experts, definitely yes, but we are not sure that the timeline is uh, achievable. Thank you. Thank you for that. Other comments? It would be good to weigh in on this at this point because this is something that's going to show up in a resolution, so we have to make some um, definitive statement as to where we want to go here. Um, in response to the uh, Czech Republic question, and in, in perhaps in order to, uh, to have uh, better clarity, if we could have a look at uh, the second option in the um, resolution. It's a little bit below that. There are a suite of options, yeah. So, so would that option identified there as option two would, uh, would represent your uh, thinking? Uh, I'm talking about uh, with you, uh, Jan. Which, did this, <laughs> okay. Yes, as a, as a basic, I can imagine even uh, bringing some more from option three to, to, to this, but uh, it's, on, uh, it's, it's, it's for the discussion. I can imagine the elevation, extract embedded annexes in technical regulation to be referred into new WMO manual style. I'm not sure about it, but we can, we can think about how to do that. But that's, from my perspective, that's the work for the technical group, uh, which uh, we should established by the resolution for that. Just come in order to advance, because when we wrote this draft resolution, uh, this, this topic is too complex to, to solve in, the, in a short time with the, a whole assembly. So I think that the last weather, the weather to establish the task team of experts if the commission feels we have, I think we have to do it in response, it has to be yes. And, and, and to respond to the concern of, of Czech Republic, what is asked there is to establish a detailed plan and prepare the revised only of technical regulation, regulation, not of the whole. That was the timing that has been requested by Congress and Executive Council. Of course, if we see, if the group sees that that's not possible, we'll inform, but the request is only for technical regulation. Uh, volume three. So w what I would suggest is in order to make this effect, this session effective, is that, I mean, unless there is objection that we agree 
you agree on having a task team, perhaps having some volunteers, because this is not, you don't have to do it now. This is not some, a, a, an item where it's very fa easy to find people knowledgeable and willing to, to work, because it's a lot of work. I think what you should more concentrate in the extent how much time, as a general feeling, you would like the advisory working group, the commission, to spend how much time and resources to spend on this. So is this priority number one, number two? We have to do it because Congress requested. But how is this a light approach or is a hard, full-time, full-thing approach? The floor is open again. <laughs> I have to clean my eyes. <laughs> Sorry. China, please. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. 就刚才提到的那四个需要讨论的问题从中找错提高我们国家战网的密度和数量这一点我非常要强调手册或者指南的话技术指南和手册 Thank you, China. New Zealand. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to uh, echo the comments of China and also add that uh, one of the drivers going forward for revision of manuals should be uh, compliance or alignment with the uh, quality management framework and I see in in the guide for instance uh, quite a few areas where there could be some improvements made that would reflect uh, the, the drive towards uh, quality management. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, if someone else would like the floor, you know, maybe hold your flag up because it's really difficult to see from here. We're not at a high enough level. So.
Okay, I think we have a sense here uh, that we can at least move on to, uh, to our third topic. And then when we finish with that, we'll come back to the resolution. So, um, so Dominique, if you'd like to move on to the third part. Yeah, thank you. So the third part is the um, Project X, so project on assessment of the performance of flow measurements and techniques. And uh, that project developed a new report on a survey on field discharge measurement and developed an uncertainty analysis decision aid tool and prepared the guidelines for conducting and reporting on the calibrations and verifi verifi verification on, of the performance of discharge measurement instruments, as well as guidance on in situ comparison events for flow measurement and techniques, the so-called regattas. And the management committee of the project uh, has recommended that the current seven project outputs should be maintained, but that the task should be streamlined in updating the work plan at the beginning of the next intersessional period uh, in early 17, and with additional activity that uh, are described in the document that maybe Jean-Francois may uh, wish to, to, to comment. And the final recommendation from the management committee of the project was to um, to have following additional activities to be considered in the future work plan of the of the project, but I think Jean Francois may wish to 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 add uh, precision to that. Thank you. Okay, so if again we uh, I'd like to to see uh, the um, Q, uh, the uh, Project X website that will be helpful. <coughs> So just scroll down, there is a description of uh, the activities that is uh, about to be posted. It's uh, coming soon, effectively. Um, the uh, text is in the end of the Secretariat for, uh, for posting. Um, what I'd like to show, perhaps, is the, uh, the actual work plan, uh, Claudio, if you can access that. Latest version. And you can access it by logging to the working website. <laughs> Everybody close their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, uh, yeah, this document, the work plan. <clears throat> okay. So this work plan is, uh, has been in development since, I think, something like 2009. It's, uh, it's uh, been a while. The, the uh, project has evolved. The project has produced many uh, deliverables. What it's, and it's hard to, to get a, a global perception by looking at, uh, at this uh, work plan the, the way it is right now. But essentially, uh, there was uh, the, the first uh, and, and, and second project outputs uh, were related to uh, a, Again, a survey to have a, uh, an idea of what are the techniques that are used. Um, uh, we tried to collect also a database of, uh, of uh, the uh, national standards that are in use. So th those are essentially completed, those two. Most of the effort in the last intercession period were uh, aimed at uh, output number three. And uh, the... Um, 
And the most interesting uh, output at this point is the fact that uh, the Secretariat has uh, currently awarded the contract to produce a decision aid tool for a, the uh, uh, discharge measurement using point uh, velocity. Uh, so this will likely be available uh, for testing this, uh, this year. And it will be a concrete example of a decision aid tool that can be applied by any NHS to uh, uh, estimate the uncertainty uh, associated with uh, those discharge measurements using uh, point velocities. Uh, if we go down, further down in the, um, the work plan, there was a, a report that is essentially completed for uh, uh, essentially providing guidelines uh, to uh, conduct and report uh, on the calibration of, uh, of the instrument. Uh, this report will be uh, made available soon. It will be submitted for peer review as well. Uh, if we go down further, uh, collection and sharing of test report. Yeah, so uh, the use of regattas to uh, help com uh, enter comparison of instrument is, uh, is, uh, is widely spread. And uh, there is a, uh, a document that is, uh, that is about to be uh, posted uh, on the design of, uh, of uh, such regattas. And uh, what, what I'd like to mention is that uh, further down, project output six, this output was uh, not really, uh, we did not put the focus on that. What, we, what is meant by uncertainty analysis of discharge determination via various techniques is currently we focused on the discharge measurement. But we know that discharge measurements uh, are used, in, for example, to uh, generate uh, rating curves. And the uncertainty, the propagation of uncertainty through those rating curves is something that will uh, need to be uh, addressed. So, but we put the focus uh, in the last intercession period on the determination of uh, uncertainty related to a discharge measurement. So um, if I, uh, if I uh, do a short resume, we have an updated um, survey on the uh, discharge measurement instr instrumentation and techniques uh, and analysis of uh, the results that uh, was pro uh, performed. We uh, will produce a concrete a decision aid tool to assess the uncertainty of discharge measurement using a point velocity area. We've produced guidelines for uh, instrumentation, calibration, and, and testing, as well as guidelines for the design of regattas. So I'll uh, open the floor for a discussion on Project X. We're bringing up a doc for you to look at. It just just to add uh, to what Jean-Francois, he explained all the, all the uh, progress that has been made and where we are, but I would like to point your attention <coughs> to, because that's what you are going to decide, what you are going to decide is what, uh, uh, in, in paragraph 41112, uh, if you could show 41112, the, the, the management committee of the, of the group always reviews uh, what has done in the, what, uh, where, what is the status of their progress and makes recommendation to the commission for the future, uh, for the next four years, okay? And this you have under 4.1.12 from A to E. I, there are five points. So just to, to, for those of you that are not find the documents, they are saying, to include a short document on references and reference standards in laboratories and regattas. B is to assist NHS's uh, National Hydrological Service in understanding and controlling every step of the measurement. So in particular to promote development and adoption of standards for discharge computation algorithm. And here is where I was making, we were making uh, reference to the point that Uganda has made twice 
already what is the interaction with the industry. There is a representative of the industry, of the HMA, of the association, both attending today, but there is a different representative in, uh, in the project management committee. And, and what the project management committee is trying to say, we would like to, to have a, the computation algorithm, for instance, by the new technologies, which now are a black box, basically, <laughs> uh, to be back uh, under the control of hydrological services, so that we and we are in discussion with the uh, with the uh, industry. So a resolution by the commission saying we support this. We want to 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 be aware of what are the algorithms of, uh, behind, for instance, the measurement in acoustic instrument. I'm not an expert. I'm just uh, saying what it was. So the C is that uh, the what that is the uh, is to demonstrate the. Uh, to the user community of the uncertainty analysis decision aid tool, the software that Jean-Francois uh, explained, the value of uncertainty quantification. The group discussed this is going to be disseminated, but as there is very little use, especially in developing countries, of, of uh, uh, calculating uncertainty, is we cannot stop at just distributing the software. We have to have training, uh, workshop, webinars, well, you can read it there. And, and these provide guidance on how to report and communicate uncertainty. Also, what we, we start uh, assessing uncertainty. How are the hydrological services going to explain? Because we are not used. We normally say if there is a forecast that the, that the discharge will be so much. So now, if you are going to start calculating uncertainty, how would you communicate that to decision makers? You know? And the last one is collaborate with the Global Hydrometry Support Facility in their innovation <coughs> hub. So these are all propositions. You can add, you can subtract, you can comment. But this is what basically in the resolution, uh, apart from there are two things that you mm, will agree on the resolution is on, on this focus and on the composition of the group. But this is something that is in the annex. It is more, it's not so technical, but then this. Uh, I don't know if Jean-François wants to add on, on, on this. No, that, uh, that, that's right. It's a, good, uh, it's a good thing to focus on what uh, the crowd is, uh, is asked to, come, to comment on. And to, just to further uh, make the point about the relation with the, uh, the industry, the standardization of discharge computation, I think, is, is the future. Because uh, we are really uh, using ADCPs uh, as they are. Uh, Claudio referred to black boxes. It's, 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 uh, I agree with that. And there's also the standardization of the uh, output format that would be uh, a good thing to have. Uh, so if the, we could help or to um, uh, convince the industry to standardize their output format, that would uh, simplify the, our business of uh, computing discharge using those, uh, those instruments. And um, the last point that was not uh, so technical that uh, Claudio referred to is a uh, uh, on the last, uh, that concerns the uh, membership of the uh, of uh, the management committee. Um, it's uh, it's it's a rather complex uh, uh, project. Uh, it's we have a defined uh, number of uh, members, and very often uh, uh, experts are uh, asked to contribute. Uh, but it quickly become uh, difficult to manage if uh, the, there are too large of a number of, uh, of experts. So there was a um, proposal to modify the uh, terms of reference so that uh, the um, uh, other expert may be called to, to help, but uh, that uh, should be limited to no more in total than the total number of members. Um, so that, that is a uh, proposal for the um, uh, for the modification of the terms of reference. And as well, a vice chairperson uh, could uh, be a name that will uh, help be very helpful in the uh, management of uh, this rather complex project. OK, so the floor is now open uh, for this discussion of Project X. Yes, the UK. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, firstly, we support the continuation of Project X for the next intersessional period and congratulate the Management Committee on their excellent work for the last few years. Looking forward, however, we're wondering how the project will be linked in with the new Global Hydrometry Support Facility that we'll discuss in the next paper. 
we feel that the, the tools and the guidance that are being developed under Project X will be of direct relevance to the facility's work. And we note that the, the management committee uh, have an item in suggested for the future work item uh, around collaboration with the facility in the area of innovation. But perhaps Jean-Francois or Dominic could expand a little bit on how that link with the facility might uh, be taken forward. And to that regard, we would suggest um, bringing the two initiatives together in some way and would like to have some text added to the uh, decision requesting the advisory working group to look at how that might be done. We can send some text to the Secretariat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other comments? Uh, from Romania. Uh, many references in uh, uh, this document referring to discharge and uh, uh, too few to, to the level. Uh, I think that, uh, for example, promote development and adopt adoption of standards for discharge computation algorithms. Uh, many um, sensors uh, because we refer uh, in this document to, to f uh, flow measurements, um, um, are uh, related to, to level. Of course, level is an intermediate uh, parameter, but I think uh, 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 this paragraph we can include uh, also, also level if you consider that, uh, not only discharge. Um, uh, the point four one uh, uh, twelve to assist national hydrological services. Uh, Thank you for that. Other comments? Just to wake you up, because I see that everybody's thinking of lunch at this stage. I, so I just would like to, to make a clarification on what uh, Jean-Francois said. He said, we will have the software available this year. I think Jean-Francois is already with his mind in 2017 <laughs> because uh, this year has only 20 days. Of course. <laughs> okay. No, but it's important that so that you are aware. We, if everything goes according to plan, around June, June, July, we will announce through the, you know, the CHY mailing list that you are all part of that the software is available for testing. Will be freely distributed. We will distribute it, but you. We have to do it very carefully because it will be distributed by um, memory sticks with all the installation. So one service will receive, if requested, will receive a memory stick and you can use it in several computers because it's, it's, so it's not linked to the laptop, it's linked to the memory stick. So for instance, I know if Finland requests, she can have it, you can have it in five different computers to try, and it's very important, as this is a first module, and we are testing if this makes sense, it's only for um, velocity area methods, in, uh, that we get feedback. So tell us if it's <coughs> easy to use, user-friendly, if, if it's worth to continue developing for other kind of measurement, uh, or if we are completely, if they are completely out of their mind, <laughs> and, uh, and it's not worth, then you can blame. So if it works, you thank the secretary, if it doesn't work, you blame Jean-Francois, basically. <laughs> no, okay, but it's really important, and so that you are aware. Around uh, June, July, that's what we hope we will distribute. We we cannot 
we have started with something like, I don't remember if it's 30 or 50 licenses, so we don't have enough because we, we think it's, uh, there might not be interest in all 150 hydrological services. I don't remember how many uh, have hydrological advisors. If there is interest, we will get the others. We will start with the first 30 or 50, and then uh, it will be on request, okay? I think this is important to know because it's something quite complicated to stage, but, and we are, it's going to happen next year. Thank you for that. Italy. Thank you, President. Um, so I respond to Claudio. We woke up. Um, I just uh, wanted to highlight that there are some necessity in uh, um, water management, operational hydrology, uh, which we find really difficult to respond to. Uh, namely, there are how we monitor discharges in, um, in small catchment, high energy rivers like in headwaters, where we have uh, very dynamic and irregular sections, and not only for, let's say, um, uh, water balance, but mostly for licensing. And this is uh, an issue with other power you know, developments, not only in the West, but in all over the world. And, uh, and on the opposite, but at the same level, it's also the how do we measure and we model the um, temporary streams flows, also for licensing. So um, I, I think these are two crucial points in which we should have a word on the limitations of modeling and the need of monitoring, for example, because it's a continuous fight in, in our you know, job to you know, contrast uh, estimations and so on. I, I, I think we need some regulatory uh, documents here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, one question uh, as a response. Are you asking for that to be done under Project X? Okay. Others? No? Ah, Czech Republic. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, First of all, congratulate the, the, the achievement so far. I, mean, I have to say that the Czech Republic has the opportunity to participate to the last regatta and guys who were there were totally exhausted by, by uh, uh, what, what really this activity means. So that was something very important for us to, to establish, although we have regattas on, at the national scale, uh, to really learn f to how to do it properly. So, so we really appreciate that. Uh, my comment maybe would be because uh, announcing of a new software might be quite surprising for, for, for many of us because uh, once it's the, uh, if it's uh, developed under the, the Project X where you have representant from ISO, uh, it might imply that uh, this could uh, become let's say standard in, in, in future, in coming years. So maybe I would only advocate uh, for a minor thing, which would be to, to make implementation plan available for anybody at the, at the web page uh, to see what is in a pipeline uh, of operation, not to hide it uh, behind uh, uh, the password. Uh, that, that's just a minor comment because I think that uh, a lot of people uh, will consult the, the web pages uh, uh, now and maybe uh, quite frequently in the future. And having uh, this idea of what is really in the pipeline would be very good uh, for many services in planning their own operation and development of softwares and so forth. Thanks for that, a good point. Other, uh, other comments? on this document. China, please. This project is very important. We are also working on the project of the Lusui project. We are working on the project of the Lusui project. 现代新新技术，比如 ADCB， 不同测量方法的比较，通过这种比较来发来采用一种新的测量方式。
，如果这个 ADCP 比牛粮呃牛鼠乙啊，呃，在同等精度条件下更有效了，我们将呃大面积的使用 ADCP。所以我有一个问题，对于 Jeff， 呃，牛粮测验的不确定的分析非常之重要，特别是对我们水温预报、洪洪水预报和水资源的管理非常重要。我想问一下，这个项目里面的这个流量测音是传统的，像流数仪这种方法，还是基于我们新的这种流量测音方法？比呃，像 ADCB 这一种，因为这个，我想很多国家也许会感兴趣。如果这个 JF 呃项目组能提供这一方面的背景材料，将对我们下一步参与这这个项目非常有帮助。谢谢。Okay. Um, okay. So the answer is uh, yes. The, there will be uh, <coughs> the um, uh, analysis of uh, how to extract or to estimate the uncertainty from uh, ADCP measurement that will be uh, undertaken uh, in the. I think it's fair to say in the in the next intersession period. <laughs> But we, given the complexity of, uh, of uh, uncertainty quantification, we, uh, we started with the most simple way of measuring discharge with point velocity. And also, it's something that uh, is uh, in use in widely in many NHSs. So providing a simple, robust, uh, robust tool was uh, viewed as a really a step forward that uh, could be uh, useful for a lot of NHSs. And then, second step, move on to the uh, ADCP, uh, the profilers, uh, acoustic profilers, to uh, further um, uh, pro provide a better uh, and, and more uh, complete tool to assess the uncertainty for those uh, NHS that use this uh, acoustic uh, technology. Thank you for that. Any other comments? Ah, yes, Turkey. Thank you, Mr. President. We would like to support the United Kingdom's uh, idea for, for uh, combining the global hydrometric support facility and the project of uh, the assessment of the performance of flow measurements and techniques. Uh, because uh, the, uh, the, when we look at the, the terms of reference of global hydrometric support facility, uh, we see it focuses mainly on the info systems. Uh, but uh, when we uh, combine two different items together, uh, we will have the, a focus on measuring, I think. And the second uh, comment uh, I would like to talk about ADCP measurements. Uh, comparing with conventional, conventional measurements with the ADCP measurements can be a solution for uh, many parts of the world. Uh, because in Africa, for example, it's not an easy to find a uh, solution uh, to check the ADCP measurements. But they can, uh, they can make uh, conventional measurements and they can make uh, ADCP measurements, and uh, they can compare their measurements, by the way. These are comments. Thank you. For that. Thanks for that. Um, any other comments on this item? Okay, I know that we've sort of mixed uh, a discussion of, um, of the resolutions to this document in with the discussion of the document. But before we break, let's actually look at each resolution. And if there are any additional comments to what we've already heard on some of these items, we can, uh, we can take stock of them at this point. So why don't we go ahead and look at the draft resolution 1.1, parent 1, stroke 1, which is further implementation of QMFH and CHY strategy on regulatory material. And this was the one that had the four questions in it, and we've already <coughs> You know, had some input on this, so um, 
Are there any other comments? Yeah, I'm just looking at the whole resolution on this point. That, 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 I think the point that we're dealing with here is, is that this document's going to have to go to a second draft. And uh, so rather than go line by line uh, through the resolution at this point, just uh, consider the whole resolution. If there's comments to be made on it, we'll make them here. And then uh, after we've come back with a second draft, then we'll be able to go line by line through it. Okay, um, I think then what we can do is, uh, and the Secretariat will then take what input that it's had on, on this f with the discussion previously, and they'll make revisions here. So when we come back to draft two, uh, we'll take an even closer look uh, at, at each of those to make sure that every comment was properly reflected. Uh, but just to close the loop then, uh, draft resolution 4.1, Perrin 1 stroke 2, which is uh, the Project X uh, resolution. Are there any additional comments to either that or to the annex to the draft resolution? Okay, then I think at this point uh, we've got enough information to go ahead and proceed with uh, the preparation of a second draft, and then um, everyone will have an opportunity to uh, ensure that uh, they're comfortable with what's been added if anything's been left out. So uh, at this point, I think we'll close the discussion on, uh, on 4.1, parent 1, and, um, and then at this point, I think we're close enough to our break time yeah, that we might as well go ahead and, um, and adjourn for, for lunch and then return at, uh, at 2.30. Does the Secretary have anything? No, no, no. No? No additional administrative comments. So we'll see you at 2.30. Thanks so much.